Hey, isn't this for the latest K-pop boy band audition? Oh, wrong video. Cut, 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 cut. Welcome to the cost of living video for Seoul, South Korea. I'm actually in Myeongdong, the heart of the shopping district. So why are we the corporate breakout couple here in Seoul? Well, some people say that Seoul is a very expensive place, while some people say that it's affordable. So let's find out in this video. We'll be bringing you real cost on the ground, updated ones for different kinds of living expenses that you need to stay here in Seoul. Hi everyone, I'm John, one half of the corporate breakout couple. In 2020, my wife, friend and I retired young in Singapore and shifted over to Penang, Malaysia in 2022. We now travel all over the world to do retirement videos and cost of living videos for you. In today's video, we're going to find out what are the living expenses like to stay here in Seoul. I'm talking about food, groceries, accommodation, transport, shopping and many more. If you'd like to know the numbers, stay on to find out. But before that, do hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to join our YouTube family. For someone who may not be so familiar with food in South Korea, one might think that it's all about kimchi and bibimbaps. In actual fact, there's a whole range of different types of Korean food that you can try, ranging from fried chicken, burgers, Korean barbecue, the galbi, toboki, kimbaps, bibimbaps, kimchi, and lots and lots more. You can spend one month in Seoul and you still won't be able to finish trying all the delicious food that they have to offer. We're at this little eatery at Hongdae and we stopped by for a quick lunch. And this is a big bulgogi kimchi and a meal for one person together with a drink. This cute little Pepsi can is around 8,000 to 9,000 won. Food courts in Seoul are amazing. It's very clean, they offer lots of variety with huge portions and everything is just so well maintained. This kind of environment leads to a very pleasant dining experience. We're here for a late dinner and we're actually in a food court but it doesn't look like a food court, right? Pretty nice and posh. Anyway, this is a pork bulgogi set, this whole thing. And this is a Jeju pork noodle. And, the, and both sets are at 10,000 won each. If you're a snacky kind of person, oh boy, you're gonna love Seoul because there's tons of street food vendors all over the place and all you need to do is just stop by and grab yourself some snacks. Street food in Korea or rather Seoul is super popular and look what I have in my hand. On my right is a uh, hot dog, uh, just a normal hot dog and then on my left is a potato corn hot dog. And it's super popular, there's queues all over the place and they're doing a brisk business here. And it's a very normal place to come and have a snack while you're walking home or going somewhere. This is a super chill and very pretty forest cafe in Ixiong. And this is their signature stone drip black coffee. This is their signature um, same coffee but with uh, egg. Each cup of coffee is between 7,000 to 8,000 won. And the beauty about this place is that it promotes slowness of life. You know, just take time, drink a cup of coffee and chill. Kind of like what we like to do always. We are in a very local Korean restaurant that has been around since 1984. And I'm having a bibimbap. And John's having fish cake udon. Looks good. And there's free sides for you to help yourself. Each meal costs 7,000 won. Let me tell you something. Koreans love their fried chicken. Everywhere you go, you see fried chicken everywhere. And what goes well with fried chicken? An ice cold draft beer, a must have. Cheers. This delicious dinner for two with four mugs of beer costs us 58,000 won. If you're a dessert fan, then Seoul is the place to be. The most popular dessert is bingsu, which is shaved ice. And you also got to try yakwa, which is Korean honey cookies. There's lots of varieties of desserts in Seoul to satisfy any sweet tooth. What do you do if you're hungry and all the shops are closed and you want to feel maybe have a midnight snack or a very, very late dinner? Have no fear. Check this out. It's a 24-hour ramen convenience store and it's cashierless. Means there's literally no one manning the store at all. It is, you choose your food and then you pay and you eat it. Let's go. 
Check out the variety of instant noodles in this store. How can you choose? Well, we love this place so much, we came back a second time. John selected a dry Samyong carbonara, whereas I went for a soup-based ramen. After you have paid for your ramen, empty everything into the bowls provided and the machine will cook your ramen to perfection. There's also free flow side dishes for you to add. For John's carbonara, there's also free cheese for you to add on and what you do is you take it and you put it into the microwave to melt the cheese and you mix it all up for a delicious meal. In Southeast Asia, McDonald's is literally everywhere, but not in Seoul. Let's check out how much a Big Mac meal costs in Seoul. A medium Big Mac meal costs 5,901 which is $4.50 USD. South Koreans love their bread, which also means they love toast and sandwiches. Welcome to Egg Drop. It is a popular breakfast spot for egg sandwiches with different fillings. It goes so well with a hot cup of coffee and a set, depending on what you choose, is around 7,000 to 8,000 won. We love Percentage Arabica and we were so excited to find it in the Starfield Library in Gangnam and it is the first outlet in South Korea. Each cup of coffee there is around 6 to 7,000 won. We are in the Ixiongdong area and it's a really nice area with full of cafes, restaurants, bars and bakery. And here, we are in this Korean-Italian restaurant. We are having steak. We are also having their specialty, a roast pasta with pork and also a vongole pasta. And yes, we are very, very hungry. This place is very popular with the Koreans and now the tourists are finding out. And this place only has one, two, three, four, five, six, six dishes and a few drinks only that's it that's the entire restaurant and you know what that means right when they have so little dishes it means they do it really really well the price for this utterly delicious meal is 72,300 won There are a few ways for you to get around Seoul, and one of them is to drive a car. However, for a foreigner, I wouldn't recommend that because renting and buying a car is just not so economical. On the other hand, the public transport system is so awesome, the public buses and the subway are so well connected. And you can easily get right hailing like taxis and private cars using that Kakao app for you to get around everywhere as well. We're in the subway station and getting around Seoul is so easy with the trains and this is standard T money card. Don't worry if our design doesn't look the same as ours, there are many variations. And a standard ticket to, you know, to your destination is around 1,400 won. Now we're going to show you how to top up. So you put your card here, then click on reloading and choose the amount that you want to reload. So for us, it's 10,000 won. And that's it. It's now currently reloading. Do not touch the card until it's complete. That's it. And you're done. The Seoul Metro subway system is so well connected all the way to the two different airports Incheon and Gimpo to the various attractions like your Nami Island, the Botanical Gardens, the Railway Park and also each station has multiple exit points for you to get to where you want and it also connects to the high speed rail KTX and SRT as well. If you are first timer to Seoul, it can get pretty confusing taking the subway, especially when you want to interconnect between the different lines to get to different destinations. However, what I really love is the people here are so polite and the place is so organized, very orderly, even though during peak hours it can get pretty crowded, but there's a fantastic system where everybody goes to about their daily activities in a very friendly and organized manner. What about public buses? Now what you're looking at is a smart shelter and the Korean government is making a point for all smart shelters to be equipped with CCTV, wireless charging points, Wi-Fi system, air condition and also heaters during the winter. How awesome is that? 
to our surprise, there are not that many supermarkets located in Seoul. I'm talking about your NTUC Fair Price, Mercato, Cold Storage, those kind of supermarkets that you can easily find in Singapore and Malaysia. So what Seoul actually has are actually the smaller convenience stores like GS25, 7-Eleven, CU, where they get all their stuff. And they also go to their neighborhood wet markets to get all their groceries. So behind me is Lotte Mart, one of the largest supermarkets there is in Seoul. Indeed, supermarkets like Lotte Mart is not really found everywhere in the different neighborhoods in Seoul. Unlike in Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore, where we have plenty. Now, the locals here, the South Koreans, they mostly eat their own local food, with the exception of pastries, Western coffee, and sandwiches. Most of their meals comprises of their own local produce. Therefore, if one were to cook here, you either want to adapt and cook some local food. Hey, why not? You're in a different country. Anyway, you can go to the wet markets to get them or you can go to specialty supermarkets like Lotte Mart in order to get your pasta, your different cuts of meats, your different Western produce in order for you to cook food of your own culture. Otherwise, since you're in South Korea anyway, why don't enjoy their local produce, their local cuisine, their japchae, their ramyeon, their bulgogi, their bibimbap and all that. So delicious. Welcome to Myeongdong, the heart of the shopping district of Seoul. And what do you come here for? Well, pretty much anything that you want. From food, restaurants, cafes, snacks. We're standing next to a snack center. And you also have um, shopping where you can have skincare, makeup, facial masks, and lots and lots more. There's a whole street of food vendors as well for you to eat. And if you're tired, hop into a cafe for you to have a cup of coffee. Or you can go for fried chicken and some beer. Myeongdong is the main popular tourist shopping destinations and it's also home to large brands for skincare, footwear, clothing, food and whatnot. You've got local brands as well like Olive Young, extremely popular and they have many many outlets all over. And you've got Juno Hair and people visit those when they come to Seoul. Welcome to the shopping district of Hongdae. It is such a pretty little district and look at all the shops. You've got food, clothing, cafes, so so many things to do and we'll probably spend the whole day here. So the city of Hongdae is very near the Hongi University which is well known for its fine arts program. So this whole vibe of the town is very cultural, artsy, very chic, cool vibes coupled with you know all the hipster cafes, it makes a very fun day out. Because the area of Hongdae actually centers around the Hongik University, which is a renowned art college, therefore Hongdae has actually evolved to become a unique free spirit culture of amateur busking performances, art markets, street art murals, and also cheap retail stores. At night, you have many, many performances from all the young street performers. And as for shopping, we actually find that Hongdae is about 20 to 25% cheaper than Myeongdong. The roads itself are very interesting as they are different little streets like Coffee Street, Dunn Street, Fashion Street and the most popular is Red Road. The road is painted red which represents the colour of passion and youth. Do you know that the cost of a tiny little apartment around 300 square feet right here in Gangnam costs about 500,000 USD? Welcome to Gangnam Gu, one of the most expensive districts of the 25 districts here in Seoul, South Korea. As you can probably guess, Seoul is one of the most expensive places in the world actually to buy apartments or places to stay. There's five main types of residential housing. The first is the most bare-bone Goshi Wons, which is around 5 to 10 square feet, super tiny, sometimes furnished for you to rent and it's the most affordable range. And the next tier, the second one, are villas. Not what you think, but these are all apartment buildings, walk up about two floors, three floors, no elevators. And the third are office tells, like offices, service apartments, where there's mixed developments of commercial and residential. And that is actually one of the Airbnb that we are staying right now. And the fourth are apartments, big and tall buildings for large family units, usually for families to stay together. Therefore, they are bigger, no facilities though. And the fifth are detached houses, landed houses, not so common because land is so expensive here in Seoul. 
Some residential districts, for example, Honde in Mapo district is very popular with expats, with young students, young expats in a very artsy, very chill vibe area for middle and upper class. Another area, Siodemon Gu, which is very popular for families around middle to upper middle class. And towards the south side of the Han River, the expensive districts, you have your Gunnam Gu, where we are right now, and your Abgu Jiong, and these are the expensive suburbs. And towards the north side of Han River, where it's slightly less expensive, residential areas like Ita Wong, Yongsang Gu, Han Man Dong, and these are areas where there are a lot of expats, a lot of international schools, shopping, international uh, chains of restaurants, and all that. Let's take a look at some rental properties in Seoul. So what I'm showing you here from the website Ace Realty is for different apartments, different office towels in different areas in Seoul of varying sizes, whether it's three bedroom, one bedroom, four bedrooms. There are a lot of different kinds of offerings for you to see like this one, office towel. So office towel is basically a mixed development as I explained earlier. And if you notice, there's this number here, there's two numbers. On the right side, you'll see 2292. That's actually in US dollars per month. That's the rental. And sometimes you see this left number in Korea, or rather in South Korea, they want you to put down a deposit before you can rent the place. And this is the amount that you usually have to cough up before you can actually officially rent the place. Here's another rental property site, Renberry, for you to choose from. If you look to the right side of the listing site, you can see the map of Seoul. So this is the main town area where you have Dondaemon, your Myeongdong, you have your Hyundai area. Towards the north, you have your palaces and other sightseeing places. Towards the middle, you can see your Han River here, the blue feature. And the south side of Han River, as I mentioned earlier, Abgu Jongdong and Ganamgu, the more expensive places to stay in. Towards the North side, slightly less expensive. North of Han River, you have your Yongsanggu, your Itaewongdong, and other places for you to stay. So you can see on the back to the left side, you have different permutations. One bedroom, one bath, two bedroom, one bath. And then you have studio like this. There's a lot smaller, 26 square meters. And you have different variations that you can choose from. Allow me to share with you some variations on rental apartments in Seoul, like this one, a studio apartment, really small, one bedroom, one bath, only 161 square feet, roughly around 14 to 15 square meters. For two people, you can see this is a bed that's designed for two people. Well, it's a very small apartment, but you can still get two people in, and the rental is going for 1.73 million won, roughly around 1,350 USD. And you can see from the description, they provide you internet as part of it. How about a very prime location like Gunnam? For this one, a two bedroom, one bath, 60 square meters, a lot bigger. This is around 3.5 million won, roughly around 2,700 USD. Of course, it looks nicer, it's furnished, it's in a prime location, and the deposit, you need to pay almost one month's rental. That's quite reasonable, actually. And you're looking at 3.5 million won. And maintenance fee is separate, internet is included, uh, utilities are separate. This is actually for three months, of course you can rent longer, but the monthly price is around 3.5 million won in Gundam Gu. And finally, this is a two bedroom apartment which I'll be using for my budget building later on. It's very near to Dondaemon Station, very central, two bedroom, one bath, 59 square meters. And you need to put a monthly deposit or rather a security deposit of 5 million won. And the monthly price is 2.7 million won, roughly around 2,100 USD. Note that later I'll be catering more because this particular unit is unfurnished. So for you to design however you want it to be, because it's going to be your long-term stay. It's a five minutes walk, as I mentioned, or one stop rather to Dondaemon Station. It's in Jongno Gu, a very good neighborhood and has all the different kind of amenities that you need, as you can see right here. There are many attractions in Seoul, so where to start first? Well, if you want to go back in time, then do visit the Gyeongbokgung Palace. And if you wear a hanbok, you get in for free. And this palace was abandoned about 300 years ago after the Korean War. And now you can openly visit the palace in your hanbok and take some pictures and look at the sights. There are also performances and changing of the guards every few hours at the palace.
After the palace, you can head on to Bukchong Hanok village, which is a 600-year-old village and is quite near the palace. So this village is actually a residential neighbourhood in the Jongno district and it's got many restored traditional Korean houses called Hanok. There are over 900 Hanoks going back all the way to the Joseon dynasty. Check out Dongdaemon Design Plaza where innovation meets design. This landmark is the centerpiece of South Korea's fashion hub and a popular tourist destination and it features a walkable park on its roofs, large global exhibition spaces and futuristic retail stores. The Han River is the fourth largest river in Korea and in the evenings, Banpo Hangang Park is a park located at the river and people flock there to see the Banpo Bridge Rainbow Fountain Show. It comes alive at night and the bridge is a well-known tourist attraction and the longest fountain bridge in the world. When the show starts, water falls 20 meters, which is around 65 feet, down from the bridge into the river. And as the water falls, it's illuminated by LED lighting and sometimes there's fireworks as well. We're here on the ferry on the way to Nami Island, a half moon island in Seoul. Nami Island is just beautiful and it's not just a location for Winter Sonata, a K-drama, but it features beautiful tree lanes, woodlands, riverside walks and much, much more. We spent an entire day at Nami Island just soaking in the sights and the trees. People always ask, what's the best season to visit Nami Island? And honestly, the answer is, there is no best time because each season offers beautiful scenery. And we're so fortunate to go there during autumn as the colours were so beautiful and we could just stare in amazement at the glorious scenery. Nami Island is definitely worth a visit, even just for half a day. Seoul has too many attractions that we can't possibly cover them all. If you're a book lover, head over to Gangnam to the Starfield Library at the Coex Mall. If you're a fan of Gangnam Style song, then head over to the Statue of Gangnam Style. If you're a nature lover, then Seoul has got you covered. They've got many, many parks for you to go on picnics, hikes, take in the scenery and just have a peaceful day. If you're in the mood for some fun and games, then head over to two amusement parks, Everland and Lotte World. Okay, budget building time. You know, I've done so many budget building for the different cities and the different countries, whether it's for cost of living videos or retirement videos. You know that each budget that I customize is for the country, it's for the city that I'm very specific on and I'll always provide you a persona so that you have a good realistic understanding of what's on the ground for the real living expenses. In this case, it's for a foreigner couple working and living in Seoul and I'm catering for one person which I call one half of a couple because of shared resources like apartment and all that. So these are the budget highlights. For food, this will be a balanced mix of local eateries cafes and restaurants and cooking at home. As you know, if you're probably familiar, Seoul is pretty expensive to eat out. So the cost of eating at home can be considerably cheaper. And the next one is shopping, entertainment, attractions. I've catered some budget for that because there's so many places to visit in Seoul, so many sites to see and you have the four seasons to experience. So I've catered some money for that as well. Here's the breakdown for the food category for this one person. 15 days of eating out and 15 days of cooking at home. For the 15 days of eating out, this person will be eating at local eateries and food courts. And for 5 days of eating out, which equates to 3 meals a day, which is 15 meals in total, it will be at restaurants and cafes, whether it's Korean or international. And this person also gets to enjoy a daily specialty coffee because the coffee culture is so strong in Korea. Here's the cost breakdown per day for 3 meals out for 10 days of eating out at local eateries and food courts. In Seoul, South Korea, it's quite common for people to bring their own water and you have a free top-up water in most eateries that you go to, for example, the food courts. And the food that you are served, typically they are quite well proportioned in terms of protein and carbohydrates. And then you usually have free flow of unlimited sites like kimchi and other preserved veg. So for breakfast, whether you eat at a local eatery, a 
South Korean eatery or even like egg drop which is like very popular toast western place it can cost you about 7,000 won for lunch food court is about 10,000 won for for example a pork bulgogi meal which is very filling and then maybe you bring your own water and then for dinner it'll be around 12,000 won and for the coffee you can cost between 3 to 5,000 won and typically 4,000 is on the average and this person spends roughly around 33,000 won per day which is around 25,000 or $25 USD for one person. Here's the consolidation for the total expenses for food category. First, you have the 10 days of eating out, which is 25 USD per day times 10, that's $250 US dollars that is per month. For 15 meals, which is 5 days of eating out, it will be at cafes and restaurants. I'm catering 30 USD for each meal. That will work out to be 450 USD per month. And for 15 days of cooking at home, it will be estimated 20 USD a day, a very healthy budget. Note that this is a foreigner couple. So if you are going local, for example, you cook South Korean food. Of course, that will be a lot cheaper. You go to the local markets, but typically for foreigner, you will eat like spaghetti, pasta, and other kind of Western food, all the food of your own culture. 20 USD a day is very healthy. That works out to be around 300 USD per month. And the total expenses will be 1,000 USD for one person. Here's the budget allocated for the household items category, 120 USD per month for one person. If you notice, this budget is significantly more than the one I've catered for in Southeast Asia like Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand. That's because your personal effects like your shampoo, body wash, your skincare in South Korea is huge and you also have four seasons as well. Therefore, there's a need to have more products to take care of your personal grooming in South Korea. Here's the cost breakdown for the transport category. In Seoul, most people will be walking or taking the subway with the occasional ride hailing. So I'm catering for 60 rides per month, which is two rides per day. Each ride will cost you on average 1,400 won. Note that this amount is fixed whether it's for two, three stops or six to eight stops. It's only when you cross a certain amount, say more than eight to 10 stops, where you will be expected to top up a little bit more. So on average, it's 1,400 won, which works out to be 84,000 won about 65 USD per month and for Kakao ride hailing app so most of the ride hailing or taxis are riding on Kakao you need a Korean number for that I'm catering for 10 rides per month so that's 15,000 won per ride and that works out to be 150,000 won per month 115 USD and this is a total of 180 US dollars per month for one person Here's the total expenses for the accommodation category for the foreigner couple who will be renting. They are renting a two-bedroom apartment at Jongno-gu, the district, one of the main districts that's very central near to Dongdaemon, and they'll be staying near the subway. The rental of the entire apartment, which will be shared by the two of them, will be 2.6 million won, 2,000 USD. That works out to be 1,000 USD per person. The household utilities of electricity and water shared, so 150 USD divided by 2, 75. USD. Internet is usually covered by the landlord. Maintenance is something that sometimes the landlord will ask you to pay, which is around 100 USD. Works out to be 50 USD per person. And your own personal handphone mobile plan, about 40 USD. And the total for accommodation category works out to be about 1,165 USD per month for one person. Here's the estimated healthcare cost as a foreigner in Seoul, South Korea. Note that I'm not catering for any insurance at all. It will be only doctor's and dental's visit. So four times a year for doctor's visit and two times a year for general cleaning for the dentist. That works out to be a total of 480 USD per year, which is around 40 USD per month for one person. Here's the final consolidated number for the monthly living expenses for the foreigner couple for one person. For food is 1,000 USD, household items 120 USD, transport 180 USD, accommodation which is rental is 1,165 USD, medical is 40 USD. Under others, because Seoul is such an exciting city with so many places to visit, I'm catering for 700 USD per month for one person and that's a very good budget for you to visit it all over and that works out to be a total of 3,205 USD per month for one person. 
So, is 3,200 USD too much or too little? Well, the context here is this is a foreigner couple who's working and living in Seoul. This is a cost of living video and these are their monthly living expenses and the simulation is for a middle class person's income. So therefore, for first world city like Seoul or country like South Korea with world class amenities like the airports, the infrastructure, the transport system which is super efficient and really affordable. For this sort of quality of life, I feel that 3,200 USD for this lifestyle is totally worth it. There you have it, Seoul, Korea in a nutshell. We hope we have given you a great account of this place. What's it like to be living here, the culture, the people, the food, the fashion and everything. Personally, I love the weather, the vibes and all the different attractions that you can see in and around Seoul. If you're looking for a great place to visit or to stay, Seoul is the place for you. We hope you have enjoyed this video. Do hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to join our YouTube family. See you soon! If you are interested in breaking out of the corporate 9 to 5 rat race or embark on your early retirement journey, do check out our Breakout Academy where we will support you further on your goals.